Chapter 28 Robinson Makes Baskets Robinson still continued anxious about his food supply when he could no longer gather it fresh from the fields and forest. Corn had again become ripe. He had found in a wet, marshy place some wild rice plants loaded with ripened grain. As he now had fire, he only had to have some way of storing up grains, and he would not lack for food. He knew that grain stored away must be kept dry, and that he must especially provide against dampness in his cave or his bower. If he only had some baskets, these would be just the thing, but how was he to get them? Robinson had never given a thought to either material or the method of making them. He, however, was gradually acquiring skill and confidence in himself. So far, he had managed to meet all his wants. He had invented tools and made his own clothes and shelter. And now, he said to himself, I will solve the new problem. I must first study the materials that I have at hand. He remembered the splint market baskets in which his father took vegetables home from the store. He recalled how thin the splints were woven. They went over and under, he said. That is simple enough, if I had the splints. He set himself diligently to work to find a plant whose bark or split branches could be used for splints. He tried to peel off the rough outer bark of several trees in order to examine the inner layers of soft, fibrous material. He found several trees that gave promise of furnishing abundance of long, thin strips, but the labor of removing the bark with his rude, imperfect tools was so great that he resolved that he would have to find some other kind of material. Hmm, why need the strips be flat? He thought. I believe I could weave them in the same way if I used the long, thin, tough willow rods I saw growing by the brookside when I was returning from my journey. He found on trial that the weaving went very well, but that he must have strong, thick rods or ribs running up and down to give strength and form to his basket. He worked hard, but it was slow work. It was three days before his first basket was done. He made many mistakes and was obliged many times to undo what he had accomplished in order to correct some error. And at last, when he had woven the basket as large as he thought was suitable for his purpose, he did not know how to stop or finish the top so as to keep the basket from unraveling. At last, he hit upon the plan of fastening two stout rods, one outside, the other inside the basket. These he sewed firmly over and over to the basket with a kind of fiber from a plant he had discovered that looked almost to be what he had heard called the century plant in the parks at home. On attempting his next basket, he thought long how he might improve and save time. He must hasten or the now almost daily rains would destroy his ripened wild corn and rice. If I could use the coils of that long grass I saw growing in the marsh beside the rice, he thought, I could make twice the progress. He gathered an armful, twisted it into cables about an inch thick, and wove it into his frame of upright rods instead of the horizontal layer of willow canes. This answered his purpose just as well and rendered the making of large baskets the work of a few hours. He found, however, that the willow rods, or osiers, were not pliant enough to work well in fastening his coils of grass cables together. He tried several things, and at last succeeded best when he used the long, thread-like fiber of the century-like plant. He had, however, to make a stout framework of rods. He would first coil his grass rope into this frame, and then sew it together with twine or thread made from this fiber. He afterwards tried making smaller and finer baskets out of the fiber that he had discovered, which could be easily had from the thick-leaved plant he thought he had seen at home. He first used long, tough, fine roots he had seen when digging up the tree at the mouth of his cave. Afterwards, he discovered some tall, tough reeds growing nearby. He laid in a supply of those. He found that when he wanted to use them, a good soaking water made them as pliable and tough as when first cut. 
the making of the baskets and storing up grains made it possible for robinson to become a farmer and thus make himself independent this thought was a great relief to him end of chapter twenty eight robinson makes baskets